Good morning! So, we are going to be starting our literature study this week online, and I'm very excited because we're going to be reading Mr. Popper's Penguins. Okay, so this is a lovely little story, and what you're going to do this week is you're going to read the first four chapters. Okay, so it's about 30 pages, and then you're going to answer the questions that go with it. Okay, and so I've sent home your literature study. The questions are right there in front of you, um, and you can paste it out or just do it all at once. It's up to you, but that's your task for this week, so try your best. And for now, I wanted to get you guys excited because this book is a lot of fun. It talks about a painter, a house painter named Mr. Popper, and what happens when he is sent a penguin, okay? Adventures ensue. So I wanted to show you a bit about penguins, and I have this fun book right here that talks about the North and South Poles. So you can have a look there and see all the penguins and here are some interesting facts for you. So the two polar regions are at opposite ends of the earth. The northern region is known as the Arctic, so that's this one, and the southern region is the Antarctic. The Arctic is an area of frozen ocean surrounded by large masses of land. Animals such as the caribou, muskox, and arctic hare live there. They all feed on land plants and are a source of food for meat eaters like the polar bear and the wolf. The beluga, narwhal, walrus, and several species of seal live in the cold Arctic seas. The Antarctic, so the South Pole, is a mass of land permanently buried beneath a great sheet of ice. In this polar region, the biggest land animals are insects, but the world's largest animal, the blue whale, lives in the icy waters. Huge populations of penguins, sea lions, and fur seals are also fed along the edge of the ice sheet. Okay? So you can see how that works. So we have penguins at the South Pole and polar bears at the North Pole. All right, and so you'll see that in the story, Mr. Popper loves learning about both of the North and South Poles. And so that's why he reached out to an explorer because they were doing a lot of exploring of the North and South Poles at the time. And he just asked, he said, how is, what is it like? And then he gets sent a surprise. Okay, so I don't wanna to spoil too much, but I'm gonna explain something else that we get, we're gonna see in the story, okay? And it's called vaudeville. So this is like going to a theater, but it's like live theater and they do a bunch of different things. So let me tell you about it. In the early 1900s, theater, theater goers can enjoy a performance of Shakespeare, acrobatics, singing, dancing, and comedy all in the same evening at the same show. A handful of circuses regularly toured around the country. Medicine shows also traveled the countryside, offering programs of comedy, music, juggling, and other novelties along with their medicines. So Wild West shows created a public image of the disappearing frontier, complete with trick riding, music, and drama. Vaudeville mixed these various elements into a standard, family-oriented form of entertainment. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, Audiences called for a strict entertainment policy of cleanliness and order, forbidding any coarseness or vulgarity in the acts so that it would be appropriate for women and children. So vaudeville shows became the place in which there was something for everyone. Drama, comedy, acrobatics, singing, demonstrations of skill and daring, and almost anything that show, that show managers thought people would pay to see. So we're gonna see that in our story too, as Mr. Popper, learns about his penguins. I'm so excited for you to read this and I can't wait till I see you in person and we can talk about the story together. But for now, best of luck, enjoy reading and enjoy answering the questions. <laughs>